Candace did not want to come out. But after she did, and mom and baby got to look at each other for the very first time, it was just true love from one to the other. Something I will never forget. I think since she's been born, we've had a very, very special connection. She's a, um, just the love of my life. We got to go home on a beautiful rainy day. Nestle that little baby for the first like, you know, three or four weeks when all they do is sleep and eat. It was really cool just being able to hold her and everything and such. She hated being inside. She had a cute little raincoat, so when, even if it was raining, we'd go outside and just walk around. She's a happy-go-lucky baby. She's always been. <laughs> I remember one day I got out of the shower, um, and she would normally run and go grab me toys and bring me her Barbies while I was taking a shower or something, you know? And I peeked out, I hadn't heard her for a minute, so I peeked out of the shower curtain. She's laying on the rug, and she's just, it was, we it was weird. It hit me in a way that was like something's wrong with my daughter. When we were driving around in the car, if you turn from side to side, like going around a roundabout or turning into a parking lot, she would she would cry out. And it was only for that couple, that little two or three seconds, and then you go straight and she was fine. My mom and Sasha spent eight hours at the at the hospital with Candace. And I remember him walking in the room and he, he tried to keep the atmosphere light. And he told us there's a large mass in her brain. I don't know what it is, but it's very large. So you're going to be flying out to Denver tonight. And we were in Denver eight hours later. I've been here ever since. ATRT is extremely aggressive. It takes hold within weeks. Turns out that they, she was having little micro seizures inside her, uh, inside her little brain. So they hooked her up to an EEG. They found the seizures were getting worse quickly, and my little girl was basically put into a medically induced coma for a couple of days, where they were trying to get everything, you know, kind of calm down. That was the hardest part for me. She would wake up for, you know, 10 seconds, look right at you, look right past you, I guess it would be, and then just go back to sleep. You're not gonna read the greatest stuff, you know, the, the so-called statistics, which I try not to look at because Everybody's different. Children were basically dying, not because of the cancer, but because of the chemo. When Candace got diagnosed, she just got started on a new protocol that has better success rates that haven't been posted out there. So she's got a 50% chance. That's better than the 15 that she had. Danny went back to Billings to get the stuff that our, our house, basically. And um, he gave me a phone call and said somebody was gonna be calling me. I remember Julie giving me a call um, while Danny was gone and she said, she was asking how we were doing. She's like, I'm gonna send you a snack bag and a pair of Crocs if you would like. I remember just thinking to myself like, wow, people do this? Like, they're here to help us with that, you know? It was awesome. And then there's a gal named Debbie. And Debbie drives out here to Lone Tree to come visit and to bring us deliveries of, of the items that their care helps us with. She kind of befriended me and Debbie's, Debbie has a heart, so it was really nice. She's touched me in a special way. We'll text back and forth when I'm packing sometimes. I want to bring them what they need and what's going to really be helpful to them. Last week when I was there, she said, I was explaining to there with care that I didn't know anybody and you'd become like a friend. And I realized how, you know, isolated she was. There with care is so much bigger than bringing groceries. 
You know when, when you're going through the hardest thing in your life and the world out there, you feel so alone and you have a small community that's come together like there with care. It's so much good. It brightens, it brings so much love. The people with there with care are beautiful people to dedicate their time, their time to help our family. She loves her grandparents. We'll put some banana in with her tea. And she loves her brother to pieces. She takes it a day at a time. I've definitely taken a few lessons from that myself. You know, take it a day at a time. Doesn't matter how bad it seems, it can it can be better. <laughs>